Hi, I'm Felix. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Bybit and Catbricks with Smart Drives. One of the biggest issues that uh, people have animating with those both systems in 3ds Max is that it's difficult to make changes to the characters once you have uh, several scenes where they have been animated. And using the standard XRefs is not possible. For example, um, if you need to change the biped structure, Max will just crash when updating. It cannot handle that. Or when using CAD, you cannot create animation layers. Max cannot handle that either. And there are, of course, a lot of other limitations as well. Here I will show you how you can have external references with biped and CAD and make uh, changes that will be updated uh, successfully with all your animated scenes. So, for example, we have to do a TV commercial with um, an animated character, but we only have a few days to do it. So the boss decides to make the animation before the 3D model of the character is done. That's not the best production pipeline ever, but the time is short. So we start with just the biped without any mesh, just trying to have the same size and a similar shape. Have in mind that you can start with a character that already has a mesh with a skin or on any other stage. This is just for this example. So, let's start with uh, referencing the character and making the animation. Okay, so after a while, we have this, and um, don't forget to save uh, the master file. Now, the modeler has already finished the final model, and the rig is already done. Here is the new file of the character, and it seems that uh, some bones have been removed in the tail and the spine. And we have now the mesh with the skin. What we have to have in mind is that uh, the names of the objects have to stay the same, or at least the objects that uh, we overrode by making the animation. So we can just go to master file with the animated character and update to the new character file by changing the file path. Uh, we could also replace the original source file instead of changing the file path, but we will do it this way in order to keep both files. As we can see, all the changes updated properly and the animation is well preserved as well. So we can just keep animating. Now, I can see there is a problem here with the skin. The good thing is that uh, the source file can be fixed and the fix will be updated in our animation. If there are more problems with the character, those can be fixed easily and updated in the same way. Even if you have 100 animated files with the same character, that's just a lifesaver because you can never have a perfect character file from the beginning. There will be always changes and fixes that have to be done. And now um, we can reference a cat rig as well and animate it as we like. Here there is a basic setup referenced and I'll start by creating an animation layer, turning on the animation mode and start animating. I also have to use a sword and uh, I will reference it as well. For now, we just have a placeholder, but we can use it and update it later when the final model is done. I will use a link constraint in this case. And uh, after a while, I have this animation and I'll just update it by changing the file path here and selecting the new character file. And uh, here it is, a new model with more detail, with the animation preserved. If I have to make any other change to the character file, I can do it as many times as I want. Now, with the sword file, I have uh, now the final model but in this case, the modeler sent me just an OBJ file. So I will open the source file containing the placeholder and import the new model. I will start with aligning the new sword first. And uh, as we can see here, there are several objects, but uh, I only had one placeholder. So there are several ways that we can handle this. For example, we could uh, attach all the objects to only one mesh. 
and uh, give it the same name as a placeholder. Making sure that the pivot is in the same place as well. So when the master file updates, the placeholder will be replaced uh, by the model properly. And then delete the placeholder. Or let me undo this. We can group all the new objects together and put them the same name as the placeholder. Again, having the pivot in the same place and deleting the placeholder. Or um, in this case, I will just create a helper. Aligning to the placeholder, put the same name, link all the new objects to the helper, and delete the placeholder. Now, when opening the master file, we can see the new sword still attached to the hand. What uh, happened is that uh, because the helper that holds the nodes of the new sword has the same name as the placeholder, all the overrides made to the placeholder are now used with this new helper, and that includes the link constraint that we used. And okay, that's it for now. I hope you find this useful. If you want to know more, please go to smartrefs.com.